Hi, it's Jade, and I read 13 books this month. <laughs> the wrap up. Just, I read 13 books. End of video. So I read 10 physical books and 3 audiobooks this month. Uh, I'll start with the audiobooks um, and then we'll move on to the physical books, which is not in the order that I read them in, but I guess that's not all that important really. Okay, so the first audiobook I listened to was Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. Uh, I gave this five stars, absolutely incredible, um, it's been a while since I've read like, it wasn't, it was not like what I'd class as high fantasy, but a full world fantasy. Um, Children of Blood and Bone is set in an alternate universe Africa, where magic used to be part of everyday life and magi were members of different tribes and each tribe magi had like a specific, specific type of magic that they were adept in. So one tribe um, would have the power to control water, another tribe would have the power to raise the dead, and so on and so forth. Um, but 11 years ago, the king led a cull of all magi and sort of wiped magic from the world. So this book is set after this cull, and it's following a um, I was going to say young girl, no, like young teenager, she's about 18, 19 I believe, uh, called, Se called Zaley Adebola, um, as she goes on a journey to try and restore magic and make it so that her people aren't treated like second class citizens anymore, because she is, or she would have been a magi if magic hadn't been like wiped from the world. Um, beautifully written, the prose is gorgeous in this, the audiobook was just beautiful to listen to as well and um, yeah. The second audiobook I listened to was Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Laurie Gottlieb. This is a non-fiction written by a therapist about her therapist and also some of her patients. Um, the whole premise sort of starts where Laurie has just broken up with her long-term boyfriend that she was going to marry because he's says, you know what, I've just decided I can't live with a kid in the house, despite the fact that Laurie had a child when they got together. And it's her sort of realising that she's not dealing with that very well, so she's go she goes to a therapist. Um, and it's like the comparison of her growth with her therapist, with some of her clients, and like the parallels there, and also some of the differences. And I have to say, some of the stories of the people that she helps through therapy just like got me. I um yeah there were points in this book where I was listening to it at work and I was like you got you got to stop listening to this at work because you are going to cry and you can't you can't do that here so very powerful very well written um I did listen to this one on like double speed because just because the narration was a little bit slow for my taste I was a bit like come on no you don't need to pause between every single like word that you're saying here but that's like my only criticism of it I gave this one a oh I also gave this one a five and yes no I would stand by that this one made me feel things that I wasn't you know exactly expecting to feel and the last audiobook I listened to this month was <clears throat> sorry about that uh, gotta get through this. My Life and Strange Times in Television uh, by Louis Thru. Um I gave this one a three star. That's not three. Three star. Which I am sad about because Louis Thru is one of my favourite documentary makers. However, I feel like listening to this I realised I'm more interested in the subjects that he covers and the way he covers those subjects. He's very non-confrontational in his um, like interview style and gets very immersed in these weird worlds that he goes into, but in a way that you know that he's not necessarily supporting the things that he's showing, but he, he wants to show to, like, both sides of every story. 
However, I found listening to just his life in general until it got to the point where he started talking about shows that I'd seen, like Weird Weekends and um, When Louis Met and all that stuff, that I just didn't care all that much and I feel really bad. I'm like, I'm sorry Louis, but I just don't care about your child. <laughs> I also felt like this book was incredibly Savile heavy, which as someone who's watched both uh, when Louis Met Jimmy and then his second documentary called Savile which was filmed after all of the allegations came out um, which was sort of it was very it was a very interesting documentary because it was going over the old documentary and pointing out things of oh that's something now with the gift of hindsight we realize is was a weird thing for him to say um, but the book was in, yeah, incredibly Savile heavy to the point where I was like, I feel like I've just watched these documentaries again. I didn't need to watch, like, I didn't need to listen to a third Savile documentary. I wanted to learn about Louis Theroux. I don't care about Jimmy Savile. So it was still, it was still very interesting. He has very, he read the audiobook himself and he's got a very engaging voice. Um, but yeah, there were just points where I was just like, okay, come on, Louis. Get through it. I want. I want to listen to when you, you know, hung out with the Nazis. Like that's what I got in for. I want to. I wanted a deeper dive into things. And however, a lot of the time, I felt like he was just rehashing things that I'd already seen, and I wasn't getting that extra level. So yeah, that was the three audiobooks I listened to uh, this month. Let's move on to the actual physical books that I read. Okay, so the first physical book I read was The Night Circus by Erin Morganson. I gave this a four star. Um, I think if I hadn't read her other book, The Starless Sea, first, this probably would have been closer to a, a five, so it's probably more of a 4.5, if I'm being honest. Um, however, Erin Morganson has like just a way with words. The way she creates worlds and makes them magical really came through in this. So the night circus is about, ironically, a circus that only opens at night. Um, but it's also a story about two magicians who make a bet and um, as a way of proving which method of magic is better. Um, whether it's like the showy um, like stage magic that one of the characters does or more of a subtle use magic just to make his everyday life easier but also like blend in with the crowd and never make too much of himself. And so in this bet, they create like a competition where each one of them will pick a protege and they will set them like against each other. However, the children that they cho choose as their proteges will not know who the other one is, when this competition will take place. And the night circus is like the backdrop to this whole thing. Um, I loved the imagery in this book, the fact that the night circus works exclusively in black and white. Like all of the tents are black and white, everyone dresses in monochrome, blacks, whites and greys. Um, all of the food is like black and white. Um, so that when you get a little flash of colour, it really stands out even though it's all in the written word. Okay, this is actually like a really good reading month for me. I think most of these books are four or five stars. So the next book I read was Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. This one um, was a four star. Did I already say that? Yeah. Anyway, this one was a four star. Um, I, I think, I don't know why, I almost went in this expecting to feel the way I did when I read A Little Life, despite the fact that it's like half the size. Um, and I didn't. There were points in this book that annoyed me as I was reading them and just like completely infuriated me. There were character choices that I was like, why would you, what? But then the more I thought about it, once I finished it, the more I was like, I think that was intentional. Shuggy Bane is the story of a young boy growing up in the 1980s in Glasgow. So this is Thatcher's England, or oh, Thatcher's Britain, and for those of you who like maybe be in America or something, but Thatcher's Britain in the 1980s was an absolute shit show, uh, especially for the working class. So in a city like Glasgow, which was 
had focused mostly on like steel works and the docks and stuff like that she was shutting all of this down so people were out of work it was just hard a very hard life um so this far as a young boy growing up in 1980s glasgow and his mother who is an alcoholic and it's the story of him living with an, an alcoholic mother a mother who has addiction problems but it is also her story about how sort of how she got onto like how alcoholism was a crutch and like the reasons that she did what she did and some of the things that like came about because of the choices that she made so there was a lot of like just very it was a very harsh reality in this book and then the more I thought about it, the more I was like no everything that happened in here is stuff that if you look through the lens of, well, why the hell would she do that? Well, she did that because she's an addict. Why the hell would he do this? He did this because he's a child that just loves his mother and he... And when you're a child who has an addicted parent, you want to, you still, you can't just divorce yourself from that and look at it from an outside eye and be like, well, she's an addict, so she's never going to change. You're still harboring that little hope that one day she'll turn around and, like, be a mum. So... Even though there were things in this that infuriated me, it infuriated me in a way that it was meant to. And I would still recommend this to anyone who wants to read. Am I going into too much depth with these? Meh. Okay, the next book I read was Hamlet by Maggie O'Farrell. Um, gorgeous cover, let me just say. This was a 4.5 stars for me. Like I said, really good reading month. This, um, as you can probably guess from the title, is... It's not about Shakespeare. And I'm very happy about this. this is about Shakespeare's son and his wife. Not Shakespeare's son's wife, but Shakespeare's wife. Um, and one of the things that I absolutely love about the book is the fact that Shakespeare is never named. He is always the father, the husband, the brother, the son. So it never focuses on him. It literally just focuses on his wife Agnes and their son Hamnet. And this all takes... The majority of the story takes space in like two days where it opens with Hamnet's twin sister falls ill with the Black Plague and he goes to try and find someone to help but there, there's no one in the house. And that just sets this series of events going that, and this isn't a spoiler because it's literally on the blurb, that this series of events results in Hamnet dying like the next day. But, so, through this you you read the story of Agnes falling in love with William Shakespeare and the trials and tribulations they went through to be together and, like, the slight otherworldliness of, um, of this character. The fact that she potentially had some sort of, like, foresight and how that affected her life and her relationships with people and how all of this like focuses around this little boy that history just sort of forgot existed and it's beautifully written and it just sucks you back into that time period in England of William Shakespeare and it's just very beautiful. <laughs> So the next book I read was uh, The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank. Um, I gave this a four stars, I believe. Let me just double check. Yeah, no, I I gave this a four stars, um, which is surprising because memoirs tend to not rate get rated all that highly from me, and I find it really hard to rate memoirs most of the time because I read memoirs because normally it's someone who has a very interesting story to tell however they're not always writers so you've got to go in with maybe a different mind frame to what I would if I was reading like a fiction book or something written by a professional author however despite being the ages between 13 and 15 when she wrote this Anne Frank's writing was really good and yes there was a lot of repetition but she, there would be a lot of repetition when you were literally stuck in like five rooms for two years 
which you know I'm not saying that this is comparable but considering you know the year and a half long lockdown that we are currently going through a lot of it felt very like a lot of the you know the squabbles over food and the being in people's spaces and not being able to get out of like away from these people that are just annoying the hell out of you especially while you're like going through puberty felt very relevant today and then despite the fact that a lot of the things she was writing about in her diary are very mundane there is always this undercurrent of there is stuff going on outside like she'd be talking about an argument that the people in her family and the other family that were living with them were having over food and also just make a mention of the fact that none of them slept that night because there was there were just bombs dropping outside but they're both written w with the same like level of severity in her little world because that's what it's like that's what history is like it's not just these big moments it's also these mundane things that are happening during massive atrocities and yeah I just felt really connected to her as I was reading this book and I kept trying to remind myself no this was a real person and this is what she was going through so yes no this was very good okay and the next book I read was The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley Booley um, once again, another absolutely gorgeous book, can I just say. Uh, this was a five star from me. Amazing. Um, I, for some reason, when I first started reading this, I didn't realise it was technically a thriller. And as I was reading, I was like, oh, oh, this is not what I was, what I was getting into. <laughs> for some reason, I thought this was a fantasy book, but, but it was not. Um, Basically, this follows, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but I'm going to say it's like Denise or Dornis Firekeeper, who is a, once again, I, I'm really sorry if I butcher these words, and maybe I should just like not try and say them. Ojibwe? Tribal? Um, she is an Ojibwe woman. Um which is a Native American tribe on like the borders of Canada and she's well she's her father was a native um a Native American and her mother was white I say was that they're, they're alive well her mother is alive in this um and it's about her trying to stay connected to her native heritage whilst also being a member of her of like her her white family as well um and and as she's as the story is taking place her tribe is being infiltrated by like a pandemic of meth and a, a bunch of young people all her age and stuff are dying of meth overdoses so she is conscripted to be like a confidential informant for the FBI to try and find out who is the drug mule in in her tribe and try and save her tribe and preserve her way of life and that for like her younger cousins and stuff like that um and for her tribe not to just be another statistic of well this is just what happens on reservations and the amount that I learnt about because I am very I feel very bad that this is the first book I've ever read with a prominent um, like First Nations character in it but I felt like I learnt so much whilst also just being so engaged in the story that it was like complete pa like this is this is in a small book and yet I like demolished it in about three days because I was like like this is so fast paced I need to know more I need to know more and everything that I thought like I figured out like some of the twists was like yeah well this is this is obviously a bad person but then another one would just come along and like just smack you in the face and that's what I like about my thrillers I like feeling smart enough that I can pick up some of the twists but then also have other ones just completely sneak up on me and me be like oh okay like wow did not see that coming but now that you pointed it out yeah you've you've built up the foundation for that I can see that now like it's not good to have a twist just for the sake of having a twist but yes, this was a five star for me.
Okay, so these next four books I'm going to talk about all in one go because they are all part of a series. And, and you'll, you'll, you'll see why I'm giggling in a second. So the next four books I read were one to four of Heartstopper. And I'm giggling because literally my last video, Heartstopper number one, was on my August TBR, but I have no self-control. And I finished everything that had been on my July TBR and just went, you know what, I need to, I want to read Heartstopper. It came into my house and I haven't opened it yet and I, I need, I need it. And yes, uh, first three got five stars, the fourth one got a 4.5. Um, and I can't exactly explain why it wasn't a five other than by the volume four we're getting into some quite heavy stuff in terms of EDs and mental health. Um, and yet I felt like it skimmed over a lot of things, like things happened but we never really, they just talked about in the past tense and it's like I would have actually quite liked to see them deal with this in the moment. But you just saying, oh yeah, this happened, it was really bad. I wanted to know more, really. Um, so that's why it didn't quite s hit as high as the first three. I still loved all of them. Like, I mean, I know graphic novels are eat, like quicker to read than regular books, but I read all of these in like a span of about two hours. And I just go couldn't stop until I got to the end of the fourth one. I was like, oh no. I gotta wait for the next one to come out and it's not coming out for ages. But um, I, had, I think I had described it a little bit in my book haul but Heartstopper is the story of Charlie and Nick um, meeting and falling in love and trying to you know find their way in the world as two young openly out boys at an all boys school um, whilst also dealing with Charlie's uh, mental illnesses. Um, he has he has like OCD and um, an eating disorder and just general anxiety and stuff. And Nick is like the most sweet, supportive boyfriend. But it's them trying to trying to figure out themselves whilst also trying to deal with like the unresolved trauma that has caused Charlie to like feel these these things. And it's, it is, for the most part, done really well and done really sensitively and you just read it and just feel all <laughs> warm and fuzzy and it's like, oh my god, these, these boys are like relationship goals, even though I'm, you know, like 10 years older than them. I don't care, they're so sweet. <laughs> okay, and the last book I read, and unfortunately this did kind of break the four and five star streak that I had going, because it uh, was Eat and Love Yourself by Sweeney Boo. I gave this a two star, um, which made me really sad because it's beautiful. The art style in this is just gorgeous. And yet the story, I thought I was getting, even though it's quite short, I thought I was gonna either get into the beginning of like a longer like series or something, or it would just tackle things a bit better. And yet everything in this, felt incredibly surface and very rushed like sorry my books like falling over as I'm talking um so despite the fact that this is a graphic novel about a girl with an eating disorder trying to figure out her past trauma as to what led to her current state and yet the payoff of figuring it out and everything didn't feel earned in any way. I'm not saying you've got to like earn your trauma. That's not what I'm trying to say. I just meant in this, it felt like we just saw a couple of scenes that felt incredibly repetitive and similar to each other. And then all of a sudden she was like, oh yeah, no, I figure out what's wrong now. I'm done. And it was like, okay, that doesn't feel relatable in any way. And... I didn't feel like I related to any of the characters. I didn't feel like any of the characters had character. Like, um, Mindy, the main character, I think her character that memorization was just sad and eats a lot. And that was it. And like, her one friend that we see like on multiple occasions, her character was just talked without thinking about it. And that's it. And it was like... <laughs> 
I know it's a short graphic novel, but give me more, please. Like, <laughs> anyway, so it ended on a little bit of a sour note. However, the sheer amount of good books that I read this month, just one bad book couldn't like destroy that. Um, now, 13 books is, is a lot for me. I know five of those were graphic novels, but 13, yeah, is not, it's not necessarily going to be something I can sustain. Um, it, I do average about like five to seven books a month, so this is probably a bit longer than most of my wrap-ups will be. Don't know why I'm giving you this disclaimer, I'm not sure. But um, yes, uh, have you read any of the books that are on this list? Do you agree with my opinions? Do you completely disagree with my opinions? That's absolutely fine. Um, leave your opinions in the comments, but just please be nice to each other. We like opinions, but we don't like nastiness. 